So last time we spent a little bit of time looking at how to calculate the center of mass for a system of particles. So if imagine we have three different particles right here. What would their center of mass be in this system, right? But imagine that we instead had some sort of solid, uniform, ordinary object like the baseball bat we have over here. So it's solid and it's uniform. We're going to assume that it's uniform for our purposes. So in such an ordinary object, we can really just think of it as an object with many, many particles or atoms, right? So we can best treat it as a continuous distribution of matter. So if we take some differential part of this baseball bat over here, we can call that little section, we're going to call that dm. And these little tiny particles then just become this differential mass element dm, and they're just made of infinitely many differential mass elements dm. So if we think back to the center of mass equation we had before, let's just say we're finding it in the x-axis. So x center of mass is equal to 1 over the sum of the masses times the sum of the uh, mass times its position. So if we think back to our solid object here, we can sort of write a similar equation, except it's all a continuous distribution with differential mass elements. So what does that make us think of? It makes us think of an integral, right? Because we're summing all of the masses of a continuous distribution. We're summing all the differential mass elements. So if we think back to this equation here, we can sort of rewrite that as an integral. So this becomes transformed into x center of mass. We still want to divide by the total mass of the object. We're going to assume that uh, the baseball bat has an m mass equal to capital M. So it still has a sum of mass capital M. But now instead of summing discrete particles, we're summing a continuous distribution of mass. So we're going to take the integral of x and we're going to multiply that by the differential elements in dm. And this integral effectively allows us to use the equation for center of mass we had for a huge number of particles. And then we can now um, extend that to continuous distributions for solid objects. So we do have to realize that we only can form uniform objects here, so they must have uniform density or a density rho, right? So we only consider uniform uh, density or mass per volume. So that means we have rho equals dm over dv for a differential element, which is equal to m over v. So now we can sort of rewrite dm in terms of volume because that'll be a lot easier to figure out. So we have dm equals 2m over v times dv. And if we substitute that back into the integral we had, we get x center of mass equals 1 over m times the integral of x times m over v times dv, and that is just the integral of x times dv multiplied by 1 over v over here. And dv and v are just a lot easier to find than dm. And now for some special cases, special case is if you have symmetry. If you have symmetry, if you have like a triangle, there is some sort of line of symmetry. So if you have any point line or even plane of symmetry, the center of mass will lie on that point line or in that plane. So it'll lie on this axis. You don't know exactly where it'll lie on this axis, 
but it will be on this axis over here for this like triangle. If you have the, I don't know, like a banana, right? If you have a banana, there's going to be some plane that you can split the banana into and the center of mass will lie on that plane. So you can use symmetry as a shortcut to find the point line or plane that you'd expect your center of mass to be on. So that is how you find the center of mass for a solid object. For ordinary objects, we see every day because it's often very unlikely that we see discrete particles and we're asked to find the center of mass. So it's very common that you're going to be asked to find the center of mass for a solid ordinary object with a continuous distribution of matter and mass. So you just split them up into tiny differential elements and sum them together using an integral of differential mass elements. And then you can use the uniform density equation of rho equals m over v to express dm in terms of dv, and you get a nice equation at the end. I hope that you guys have learned something new from this video, and in the next couple of videos we're going to be going over some practice problems for you to apply what you have learned about center of mass to actual problems.